All right, so we're going to end this section with one more example. And the function that we're going to look at this time is this one. f of x is sum, n going from 0 to infinity, x to the n over n factorial. Okay, so we want to try and figure out what this function might be, right? Well, what can we say about this function? We know that the domain, the domain of f is minus infinity to infinity. We saw that in an earlier example. Okay, so this is a function that's continuous everywhere. It's differentiable everywhere. Um, what else can we say about it? Well, what's the derivative? f prime of x is going to be the sum n going from 0 to infinity of n x to the n minus 1 over n factorial. Right? OK. Oh, but we can simplify this a little bit, right? n factorial. We know that that's n times n minus 1 factorial. So we can cancel some n's. And also, we can point out, actually, before we cancel the n's, right? Again, remember that that sum should now start at 1, because the first term here is just 1, right? And when n is equal to 0, we get 1 over a 1 over 0 factorial. We just get 1. That derivative goes away. So this sum is starting at 1. And if we clean it up, we've got x to the n minus 1 over n minus 1 factorial. Oh, but just like we did in the previous examples, we could shift the index, right? We say, hey, it would be nice if the sum started at 0. And if we drop the index by 1 here, we have to increase it by 1 over here. That's what we were doing in the previous videos. So if we re-index, we get, we get the sum n going from 0 to infinity, x to the n, over n factorial. Oh, we know what that is. That's just f of x. It's sitting right there. OK? So what we've shown is we've shown that f prime of x is equal to f of x. So we found a function that's equal to its own derivative. Right? Um, so now we start thinking, do we know examples of functions that are equal to their own derivative? Well, the 0 function is 1. This doesn't really look like the 0 function. Looks like this takes on some non-zero values. What's another one? Ah exponential function, right? This suggests, this suggests that maybe this f of x is really e to the x, okay? Now, this is actually a strategy that people will use, right? This pairing of power series with essentially differential equations, right? This is really, so if you've, if you've done differential equations already in your course, right? y prime is equal to y. There is a differential equation. It's both separable and linear. We know how to solve, right? And so if you're solving that differential equation, we know that the solution has to be y equal to some constant times e to the x, OK? Using, using techniques for differential equations, right? So, and actually it's true. Any multiple of e to the x would still satisfy this property. Um, what value should the constant be? Well, we can look for an initial condition, right? What happens if we put x equal to 0? Uh, f of 0 is, let's see, what is it? Is it 0? Not quite, right? It's not quite 0 because remember the first term in this sum is 1, right? It's 1 plus x plus x squared, right? Again, it's that 0 to the 0 thing, right? We, we let x to the 0 be equal to 1 even at 0. Um, so f of 0 is equal to 1. Ah, but e to the 0 is 1, so that means c has to be 1, right? 
So C is equal to 1, and that is what we get. Right? It's a standard strategy for a lot of these things. You, can, you start with the power series, you take derivative, maybe second derivative, and you play around with those results, and you see if you can fit them into a differential equation. And maybe it's a differential equation that you know how to solve. If it is, then you can actually say what that power series is. And it works the other way as well. Maybe you have a differential equation that you don't know how to solve, okay, using kind of elementary functions that you're familiar with. So you try a power series solution. You just plug a power series into the differential equation, and you get some equality, right? You plug the power series in, and you start playing around, and you say, okay, well, if, if the function, you know, if, if it has to be equal to its derivative, and you kind of do it for, you know, let's actually, you know what? It's not part of the example, but let's look at this. It's a useful thing to notice, right? If I looked at a general power series, um, so if I said y or f of x, if I said y is some power series, a n x to the n, right? And I said, okay, so y prime, y prime is going to be the sum n a n x to the n minus 1, and I can re-index that to n plus 1 times a n plus 1 x to the n, right? Um, so if somebody gives me this condition to say, okay, I want you to let y prime equal to y, you say, all right. So that means that the sum a n x to the n, right, n starts at 0 in both cases, 0 to infinity, um, n plus 1, a n plus 1, x to the n. Well, what does it mean to have equality of power series? If the powers of x match up, this matches up, right? If they're equal, well, then the coefficients have to be equal. So you can make this conclusion. You can say, well, um, a n plus 1 times n plus 1 is equal to a n. So this gives you a recursion formula, right? A n over n plus 1. All you need is an initial condition, right? What's a0? So that initial value, a0, is, is the value of y at 0. So if somebody says, oh, and y of 0 is equal to 1, then what happens? Well, then you get a0 was equal to 1, a1 is 1 over 1, a2, which is 1, is 1 over 2, right? A3 is 1 over 2 divided by 3. It's 1 over 6. It's 1 over 3 factorial, and so on. And you can show that in general, a n is going to be 1 over n factorial. You recover the power series, right? So it's a two-way street. It's kind of interesting that you get it both ways. Um, the textbook also does the antiderivative. You can similarly show that if you take the antiderivative, you also get e to the x up to a constant, right, um, which we expect. Um, so that's an interesting example, right? Just looking at the power series, playing around with the power series, looking at the properties that the series has itself, you can start understanding something about the function that it represents.